Smart Bush Series on FX, presented by John Deere, is brought to you by Smooth Bush Beer and Easy Drinking Bush Light. Bush, the proud sponsor of the NASCAR Bush Series. Right now, Michael Waltrip, your leader, taking the lead on lap 125. Martin Truex Jr. leading the most laps, 68 thus far. As we wind this thing down, the tires, long runs. I guess you lose about, what, seven miles per hour over the long run, Jeff Hammond? That's about right, Chris, what you get it into. The cars slow down almost two seconds from when they're brand new to where they are right now. Michael Walter, you see, can get him close to time to make a pit stop. He's got his hands full no matter whether they're running the top or the bottom, and he's the leader. Jamie McMurray going for his fourth straight win here in the Bush Series, running third. Well, I'd say it's going to all come down to one thing. How you get on and off pit road, who does the best job on pit road, Pit strategy right now is going to be the call of the day. And uh, looking for his first win, Martin Truex Jr., also Kyle Busch. You mentioned he's back in the top ten after having fallen back a couple of laps uh, early in the race. Again, he's had an outstanding run trying to figure out what his car needs, and I'm sure he's been communicating to his guys on pit road. Look, we got to make this last stop. I need this much to my race car if you expect me to beat Michael Walter. 53 laps to go. Let's go uh, back upstairs to Mike Joy, Larry McReynolds, and Daryl Walter. You know, there's a lot of pushing and shoving that goes on back in the pack that uh, sometimes we don't see. But watch this five car coming off of turn four here. He gets in the back of Bobby Jr. and he says, I got to go, baby. I've had a rough day and I need to get to the front. And times are running out. That's right. Green flag pit stops have begun. Johnny Benson is in uh, for tires. Now, these don't count against the allotment since he takes them under green, but he will lose a lap or two in the process. Yeah, it wasn't that many laps ago. We had about 18 cars on the lead lap. Mike Wallace was the first of the lead lap cars to come to pit road in the four car. He was on at lap 139. Johnny Benson in the one comes to pit road. So now we've got, it looks like we've got a fire on pit road. That's in Robert Presley's pits. He was just coming out of the pit as we watched Benson and something like fuel spill. Probably so. I mean, you've got hot lug nuts laying down there. You've got a lot of things that if fuel hits any of it, it can cause a fire. But it looks like they got it put out okay. Matt Yoakum, what's going on? Larry Mack, there was a fuel spill, but Michael Walter was getting ready to pit. Members of his team are trying to sweep up some of the aftermath and the fire extinguisher because Michael will have to drive through that pit on entry into his pit. Robbie Gordon is in, so is Stacy Compton as green flag pit stops are the order of the day. Yeah, I noticed Michael at 99. Matt? Michael Waltrip's coming in. Martin Truex Jr. is slow entry trying to go around a back marker. I don't see the wedge wrench going in the back window now. As both cars are in, Truex, he has finished second Bush Series competition on two separate occasions, trying to make his first trip to victory lane a little slow on the left front, but a solid stop. Meanwhile, Michael Waltrip's team they know they've got to pull off a great stop here to get Michael back to victory lane. He hasn't gone to Bush Series victory lane since Bristol last year. As Rodney Fetters helps with that tire, he's going to be running around the front, cleaning that windshield for Michael Walters. They go to work on the left side. Almost three pumps there for Rodney. Good solid stop for Michael Walters. Team. He's down and away. Hornaday and McMurray are in along with Fedewa and Atwood. And now, put road is filling up, Jeannie. Here they come. Jamie McMurray present and accounted for. He had started to notice a vibration in the car. It has been loose all day. Of course, he's getting the four tires, half pound out of the right rear, but he's been driving great, so they are pleased. Johnny Sauter, Kyle Busch, Bobby Hamilton in the pits, Ashton Lewis. Steve? Mike Jason Keller had wanted to wait to lap 170, but the leaders forced their hands, so they're in early. They couldn't afford to waste any more time. Four tires for Jason Keller, no adjustments. Mike Bliss is in, Andy Ponstein. You're watching Kyle Busch. Dick Bergman. Johnny Sauter has just made his pit stop, a major chassis adjustment. Right behind him is David Green. They are also adjusting the chassis on his car. Going to loosen it up just a little bit. Right sides are on, left sides are going on. This will be a four-tire stop. They'll still have one set. This doesn't count against the three that they've got because it's a, yellow, it's a green flag stop. David Green was the leader. Kevin Harvick now picks up first place. Here's a look at Harvick and the Reese's Chevy. Aaron Fike is on pit road along with David Stremme, who's many laps down. You know, we talk about not making mistakes. You know, how many pit stops do you think Michael Waltrip in the 99 has made under green at all the racetracks, including Rockingham? But I, well, you got to tip your hat to Martin Truex Jr. Not only his pit crew, he's not made that many green flag stops in the Bush Series, but he has a good solid stop. He comes to the sign, no mistakes on his part, and he comes out almost making up a little ground on Michael. 
Can you remember Dover when he drove the car at Dover and he spun getting on pit road at Dover? I think he learned. I think he's a pretty quick study. He learned his lesson. So that leaves Harvick and Steve Grissom as the two lead lap cars that have not yet been on pit road. Paul Menard uh, also has not yet cycled through and made his pit stop. The problem, they're given two seconds a lap up to the leader. Their only hope is a caution comes out in the next three or four laps. Yeah, and there's a good chance of that. I mean, it, you know, if you look at history, history will tell you that this is the time you have of somebody getting into somebody and spinning out. Here's Grissom, former series champ, who has picked up now second place. Has that DCT on the hood, that stands for dreams come true. 42 laps to go. He's going to need a pit stop. Again, this strategy for Steve Grissom or Kevin Harvick, if we, if we go green, it's not going to win the race for them. They need a caution flag. Because they're just giving up so much yeah. time. Um, Harvick run 25-0, and uh, Michael's back here running, uh, or 27-0, Michael's back here running 26-2. Uh, waving, Harvick waving out the window there. He's getting ready to turn left. Yeah. Have to hurry, you're the lucky dog right now. And Paul Menard is uh, getting, made a rookie mistake and will get a pass through penalty as uh, Jason Leffler comes to pit road. Menard, after the commitment line, turned in onto pit road, and uh, that will get him uh, a penalty drive through. Yeah, we got a couple of cones down there, and you've got to be committed to pit road, and you've got to be single file when you get there. Now. Which is a good move. Good move, good move. You've been seeing Kevin Harvick use his hand signals like on the front stretch a while ago. He knows how quick these guys are catching him, and he's trying to give up as little bit of time as possible, showing them where to go by me, either on the low side or the high side. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's kind of playing the hand he's been dealt. Uh, he can't, you know, when he makes his pit stop now, he is going to be really a couple of laps down. So he's just hoping for that caution. If he doesn't get it, then his strategy goes out the window. But if the caution comes out, Everybody can get tires. Everybody can get tires, and he's going to be, you know, he's going to be in trouble the same, either way. So, probably not a good move. And this is the battle for third right here. Mark Truex Jr. and eight car Michael Waltrip in the 99. They're basically about 10 seconds behind leader Kevin Harvick. But until Kevin Harvick pits right now, we only have about seven cars on the lead lap. And that would change when him and Steve Grissom do come to pit road. Michael's made up five seconds on Harvick in the last three laps. Right now we have 37 laps to go, but Steve, what are they thinking with this strategy? Hey, Larry Mack, DW was exactly right about Kevin Harvick. They're trying to play the tire game. They've been fighting a tight race car all day. He's also been having radio problems. They think this is their only shot to win the race. Well, right now, if he pits under green, he's going to go from leading the race to almost maybe even two laps down. Well, at this stage, they call that strategy, we hope there's a caution, and we hope it's not us. And they're trying hard down there in three and four, aren't they? Oh, yeah, they're, they're bumping and grinding. There goes, the, there goes the 30 car by Michael, and that puts him back up in third place. I mean, you just look at the interval right there, how much he's mowed him down just in those few laps. That's three laps, four seconds. And Jamie McMurray is quicker than that as he moves up in the order. This is the NASCAR Bush Series on FX, presented by John Deere. Kevin Harvick got what he wanted, a caution flag, but it wasn't pretty. The Goodies Headache Powders 200 under yellow because Aaron Fike spun up in turn number three and long after the caution waved was T-boned by Hermie Sadler. Both drivers are okay. You see them both, but the damage to those cars is heavy. Fike will be the 43 down on the inside. Gets cut off a little bit there. Johnny Sauter. Tries to stay off of Sauter, and in, in the process of doing that, he spins the car around. Whoa, that was a great move there. Bobby Hampton, Bobby Hampton squeezes through on the outside. Now, Fike's holding the car up here. He's not going to let it roll down the hill. He's going to lock the brakes up here. Now, remember, they, everybody's supposed to be slowing down right now. You're not gaining anything by racing. The field is frozen. Now, you're going to see this car start to roll, but I'm not so sure he didn't see Hermie coming and thought, oh, gee. Oh. That was a hard hit. I, th I think he saw that car coming, and he said, he's not going to miss me. Yeah, I mean, he's all the, all the way up on the outside. I, I, I don't know. It's hard to say what a driver's thinking, but I think the 43, Fike thought he was. He saw him coming. He said, oh, gee, i got to get down. Here's how Michael Waltrip saw it. 
he saw all of that. I agree, Daryl. You know, Hermes coming to the high side. Well, I'll give him room up there. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what he thought when he when he then he realized, oh my gosh, that is right in the driver's door. Both guys got out and walked to the Hamlets, though. Uh, that says a lot for the integrity of these race cars. And the 43 was just, I mean, hadn't, he didn't have any damage. He just spun, and he was just sitting there. Hermie Sadler, his crew chief and spotter, will have a meeting in the Bush Series officials truck after this race is over. And right now, pit road is closed. We are showing 12 cars on the lead lap. Big break for Kevin Harvick. Big break for Steve Griffin as well in fifth. working the fourth caution of the day. Here at Rockingham, you're looking at Kevin Harvick. He and Steve Grissom had hoped for a caution so their fuel strategy would play out. The caution came out when Aaron Fike was squeezed down by Johnny Sauter and spun up to the high side at turn three. It was then tagged hard by Hermie Sadler. But in Harvick's pit, not seeing the incident, just knowing the caution was out, they're pumped up. It's good for Harvick, who will now get a chance to pit under caution. Steve Burns. Yeah, Mike, it's great for Kevin Harvick. They've been battling two problems, a radio communication problem in a tight race car, so they will drop air pressure one pound in the left rear tire, and crew chief Ricky Byers is communicating to Kevin Harvick via team owner Richard Childress, so Richard then talks to Kevin. Jeannie. Jamie McMurray had two questions. One, do I end up another set of tires? And two, what's the eight car going to do? That's the decision to pit. The car's been a little tight. They've made adjustments. Matt? No adjustments for the eight car. They will go with four sticker tires. Just besides the driver and the crew chief, Dale Jr. took a chance on the over-the-wall guys. A solid stop three have never worked over the wall before. Dick? David Green had been running in fifth position. His crew had anxiously been waiting for it. He's gotten four tires and fuel. He's gone. So is Michael Waltrip. There's Johnny Sauter getting his pit work. Now, this caution benefited Kevin Harvick and Steve Grissom. However, the former series champ had to pit while pit road was closed because he ran out of fuel. And I'm not surprised, really, because it had been 89 laps since he pitted. You remember at the beginning of the show, we showed you the graphic, tires and fuel. That's about how far these cars could go on fuel. Now, the penalty will be he has to start at the tail end of the longest line, not the end of the line of lead lap cars, but the end of the longest line. But he's still going to be sitting back there in about 12th position. Good run for this group regardless. And the other driver to benefit will be Robbie Gordon. He'll get the free pass. Now, let's see what happened here with Hermie. He's, uh, he's up on the outside here. He's coming down in the corner. He's forced up high, I guess, if you want to look at it that way. I wouldn't really say he's racing anybody. It's got to be that that car that was in front of him took his sight uh, vision away, and he couldn't see uh, Fike sitting there. And uh, by the time he did, it was too late. Agree, Darrell. It still doesn't answer the question of why were they still going so fast. Yeah, uh, that's true. The spotter should have been out. Spotter should have been telling to back it down. You know what I like, though? 26 laps to go. Nobody has any tires. You can just say, go, boys, go. And we will when we come back.